Yes, I can. Okay. Good afternoon, sir. Awesome. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michelle Yakubu, and I am the head of partnerships and collaborations for the Engineering Career Expo. So we welcome you all to today's session of the next conference. The next conference is organized by the Engineering Career Expo. So on today's session, we'll be talking about two critical topics. The first topic is titled Leveraging Tech to Build Wealth, while the second topic is titled The Art of Negotiation and Negotiation Skills. So we'd love for you all to subscribe and like our YouTube channel. We'd also love for everyone to follow us on all our social media platforms. And we'd love for you to tweet about your experience on the next conference. When you're tweeting, don't forget to tag at ECX Unilag using the hashtag the next conference. Don't forget to tag at ECX Unilag using the hashtag the next conference. All right. On to the show. So here with us today is Mr. Ade Joro Oluwashola. Now I'd love to introduce I'll be introducing Mr. Ade Joro to us all. Mr. Ade Joro Oluwashola is the CEO of the Mirror Pass Technologies Limited Nigeria, a company birthed as a result of, of contributing his own support in achieving sustainable development goals in Africa, focusing more on goals one, two, and eight. Using the company, Mr. Ade Joru has financially empowered more than 700 people in Nigeria. Mr. Ade Joru is also the CEO of Hot Eye Global Company, Abuja, Nigeria, a non-conventional educational company that developed a subject curriculum known as Leaderpreneur Development Studies for Schools in Africa. With LEDs, Adejoro Oluwashola has empowered more than 1,000 students. He is a Class 7 alumni of E Founders Fellowship by Alibaba Business School. He was awarded Outstanding Entrepreneur in 2018. He holds an HND in Health Information Management with an upper divisional class from the School of Health Information Management, University College Hospital, Ibadan, Oyo State. He also holds a certificate in Information and Communication Technology, a member of International Institute of Global Leadership, Asheville, USA. He has a very great affinity for teaching and imparting people's. He has a very great affinity for teaching and imparting people's and students. He is a young and astute personality, with a passion to see young minds develop into global impactful leaders from Nigeria. He is the founder of Sustainable Development Goals Awareness Initiative initiator of a campaign known as Sustainable Development Goal Awareness Campaign Tour for Africa. He, coordin he coordinates youth in over 17 African countries. All right, so that is Mr. Adejoro's biography. Mr. Adejoro, you're welcome to the next conference. Yeah, thank you. Thank Welcome. You how, are you how are you doing today, sir? Ah, I'm doing great. All right, that's great. All right, on to our topic for today, leveraging tech to build wealth. So, Mr. Adijero, what do you have in store for us? Oh, well, um, I'm not sure if I have a lot, but the little that I have, um, I'm willing to, to share with um, with everyone, which I believe that um, I will try my best to make impact as much as possible. So let's add those. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Over to you, sir. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to appreciate the organizer of this um, conference. 
for the privilege given to me to, to be speaking today. Um, I want to say well done, and I believe that the essence of or the objective of the conference is to ensure that um, the students in of the society and everybody at large have one or two information to see how they can better their lives. So with that, I say well done, and I pray that um, more wisdom and strength for you guys to be able to move ahead and move to the next level. So um, today I'll be um, talking about leveraging tech to, to build wealth. I'm not going to bore you with um, a whole lot of theories and, and all that, but that's not my, actually that's not my way. I will focus more on um, using uh, my experience, what I do right now, to buttress um, my point. So um, let's just see uh, some definition of terms before I go into the proper presentation. All right, um, leverage. You know, we're going to talk about leverage, technology, wealth. I'm going to talk about uh, invention. I'm going to talk about uh, innovation. But let's start from um, leverage. What it means for uh, for you to leverage on on something. Now, according to the definition we have, it says the general terms for any techniques to multiply gains and losses. I'm not going to sound um, like a business person. I'll try as much as possible to make it um, a general a general term so that we all can understand it. So it's just like um, how you uh, make use of something in order for you to attain a particular thing. So that means you leverage on it. I'm going to explain how and how you are going to uh, do that. So by applying the concept and the power of leveraging, you can achieve a, a lot more in both your business and life. And that's just the truth. There's no way you, uh, as an individual, as a business person, as a student, or whatever sector you find yourself, there is no way you can do everything all by yourself. So you need to leverage on one thing or the other for you to be able to achieve lots more. I think that's why they said two S are better than one. Well, they said two good S anyway, they are better than one. So you have to leverage on one or two things for you to achieve. So without the power of leverage, your reward are restricted. And that's just uh, the truth. Now let's move to technology. Um, by now, I believe that everybody knows what technology is all about. So that's why I'm just being so uh, fast about it. Now, everything we do right now, uh, they're talking about digital economy, a whole lot of stuff is going on in that space right now that you just need to get involved in what um, technology is, uh, is all about. Both it can be both material, immaterial, it can be application, it can be mental or physical effort in order to achieve some more value. So. I'm going to explain that much more later. Now, wealth. Now, uh, the topic is leveraging on technology to build wealth. Now, um, wealth, like they said, that uh, wealth is not just about money. The true wealth means what? Seeking deeper relationship, more personal growth, ways to create more meaningful life. Achieving true wealth means possessing the ability to enjoy the small, ordinary pleasure of life. So when we talk about wealth, it's not just about money. You can be wedding in, in, in human resources, you can be wedding in wisdom, you can be wedding in information, you can be wedding in technology, you can be wedding in so many things. So that is what, so don't think um, I'll talk more on uh, how you can use um, technology to actually make money. But how you can use technology to build your wealth, which I believe money is also inclusive. The next slide, please. Now, invention. Now, why I'm bringing invention is because of um, the tech part. Invention and innovation. Now, uh, invention is the process of developing a new technology or capability. It's different from innovation occur in its own sake. It means that we are building something entirely new. We are bringing something entirely new to the space. That is invention. Uh, in, the, uh, in the olden days, when they talk about electricity, uh, planes, and all that, those are invention. But now, innovation is the process of accurately representing a problem and finding a solution, thereby matching the seed with the problem. That is the need. So in a startup context, the solution you bring something to a customer want and pay for it. So don't let me uh, talk too much about that. Innovation is just um, 
you created something from the existing thing. So now there is a market already, but the way they are doing the market, it does not make sense. But you now decide to be more innovative about it. You now develop something to make the activities of the market more easy and accessible to people. That is innovation. So in whatever business you do or the study you are, you, are, you are doing right now or whatever business you want to go into, the existing business or the new one, okay, let me use the existing business. The existing business, for you to be now more creative about whatever you are bringing on board, just like um, transportation before now, everybody knows that you need to um, leave your house, go to the bus stop, um, wait for some time, get a bus, get to where you're going. But there's now innovation about Uber, uh, boat, and all the rest, where you can do all the right, um, requests and all that from your house. That is uh, part of what we mean by the innovation. Now, as a person, how do you now leverage on technology to bring about innovations so that you can now build a sustainable world. So that is what I'm going to focus more on. I remember in the year 20, um, what should be 2013, and that was when um, um, I started this uh, non-conventional thing where we teach students in school, and you know, the, the stress of moving from one school to the another for approval and, and all the rest. And at the point, it was so tiring but we need to find a way to do it. And I remember, okay, there's social media. As I then, they will start making use of um, the Facebook page and all that. And to, to my surprise, uh, we got about um, 15 schools in Oyo State then through the Facebook page. And when we started, I remember I visited close to like 30 schools, moving from one school to the another, and we get some kind of um, no answer and all that kind of funny, funny answer. But when I leverage on Facebook, without stress, all I needed to do was just to drop the content of the program, of the curriculum on the page. Visited the page, they contacted us, and we got the deal. Do you understand? So that is one of what you can enjoy when you leverage on technology. Now, if you're a business person, you are a fashion designer, whatever you do, you have to now look inward. What kind of technology can I leverage on to make my business more accessible to the customer? If you're a student, what kind of technology can I leverage on to ensure that my study will be more effective? And we have all these things available in the tech world, but it just depends on how deep you can search. It depends on how deep you can make your research. It depends on how dedicated you are, depends on how determined you are to achieve that success. Because if you are well determined to achieve the success, then the hunger will be there for you to make a whole lot of research to see how you can leverage on some other things to ensure that you enjoy whatsoever you want to do. Now, fast forward to 2000 and, um, 2016, I got a job with the retail company in Abuja, and I was employed as a salesperson. You know, normal marketing job that you have to move from one office to another. And that's my first time of doing that kind of job. Now, moving from street to street, my shoes, my, I'm, I'm, I'm marketing something um, reasonable, but when you see my appearance, based on the kind of um, the trekking thing and all that, you, are, you will definitely doubt what I'm selling to you. So at the point, I got discouraged about that. Like, I should find a way to do this marketing rather than moving around and all that. I remember again that I can leverage on technology. Now, by developing a mini app, which I just share with my friends to say, okay, all I just need to do is get a sample, kind of a survey of a thing. When I get that survey from the survey, I can now get a result to know if you will need my product or not. Before then, I will now approach you based on the first survey to make you to know more about who my potential customers are. So that makes my work more easier. Rather than starting all over your problem and all that, just go straight to what the needs of that customer is. And before you know it, I was able to generate a whole lot of traffic to the company. And within less than uh, a year, from six person, I was promoted to be the general manager of the company in Abuja. Now, nothing special, but I was able to just look inward and see what are those available things I can make use of? Yes, it wasn't perfect when I was working on those apps and all that because I'm not a computer 
um, engineering or whatever student studying information management. So computer can some of my business. But at least I was able to develop something minimal, then I make use of it. So what it, what it means is whatsoever you do, whatever space you find yourself, there is something somewhere you can leverage on. It can be persons. Now, um, uh, after being the manager, now, as a manager, for you to be effective, it depends on who your team members are. And it depends on how influential you are within that space. And it depends on how uh, you are able to carry them along, which is the team spirit and the teamwork. Now, for you to do that, you have to now to leverage on some human capacities in order for you to achieve all that. Now, what I'm saying is it's not just in, in tech world that you leverage. In everything we do in life, we leverage, we leverage a whole lot of things. Now, um, uh, before, before uh, this show, I, I was talking with uh, a company that we are doing one or two things with, and um, someone is giving me kind of a tough time about it. And, oh, I think I know someone somewhere in this company. I contacted the guy, and within five seconds, let me say five minutes, the other thing was this, and I was shocked, like, oh, wow. What of if I don't know this guy? And I was able to contact the guy because I have a kind of a good relationship with the guy. So when we're talking about leveraging, as a person, you need to ensure that you keep a very good relationship with people. Because you will definitely need them in one way or the other in your life. I went to University of Abuja to, uh, some years ago for a program, and I met a young guy that accommodated him in his house for a night. And that night, I asked about, what do you do? He explained to me, I'm a good actor, this, that, that, and all that. Fine. A few years later, I started um, the company, which is the Middle Class Technology Limited. I needed a very IT guy. I was thinking, who can I? I remember this young guy. I contacted him, and today, the guy is really working with us. Now, that is what relationship. So I was able to leverage on the relationship to get the guy on board so that what the company is meant to do, then it can now come and make use of his talent as a tech person to ensure that we achieve the objective of the company. So as an individual, you leverage on relationship, technology, available information, your research, to now form your decision about whether you're ready to build a world or no. And for you to do that, that means you need to build a system. So building a world is about a system. And for you to have a proper functioning system, then you need to leverage, you need to make use of technology. So uh, yes, I'm not an IT person. I don't understand how this tech thing works. That is why you need to leverage on the relationship with people. Because you need you will know one person or the other that will know someone that will be able to do what you needed to do. So what I'm trying to say is ensure that you keep a very sound relationship, dedicate more of time to your research, seek and see which of these technologies available will be suitable for that business you do. I met with a young guy who is a tailor and he was complaining about um, most of his customers are in Turkey, and anytime they want to make do all these designs and all that, they need to send their measurements from Turkey and all that. So at the point, getting the measurement was very difficult for him. So I told him, why can't you develop an app that can they just install on their phone and it will take their measurements? You go, is that possible? I said, yeah, it's possible. All you need to get is get people who are sad and tech. Explain your concept to them, and they will make it happen. So instead of the stress of going for a tailor somewhere, let them measure you and send me the measurement. Develop an app that your customer can easily download, install. You just take their full picture with the app, and the necessary measurements from the part of the body and all that, the app can identify. You sum it up and send the measurement to you, and you are fine. I hope the young guy is working on that right now. So that is what we can do with technology. Anything you can imagine, I believe, you can achieve if you can make use of the right channel and right, uh, right people. So, um, e-commerce. So this is just my journey so far. Um, 
e-commerce, um, like you all know, e-commerce is a very broad um, a sector. We have the likes of uh, the junior, the conga, and all that. But because of uh, the objective of the company to see how we can empower people and ensure that we rebrand the image of e-commerce, we venture into uh, 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 e-commerce. And so what do we need to do to make it different? Everybody log on and you shop, they deliver seven days, three days, whatever days, but well, I think they will deliver to you. But what can we bring on board to make it more different? So we are now more innovative about our own e-commerce and we introduced something called an app program that makes people, now what drives people to our e-commerce platform is not actually the e-commerce, but the athlete system that we, we integrated into it. And once you get to that, then you have no choice now to purchase whatsoever we sell on our e-commerce platform. What am I talking about? Technology. E-commerce is an existing business, but we still find a way to tap into it and still get our own share of the market. Likewise, in real estate, in transportation, name it. So, now, I was able to build the company from just, um, I think uh, I started with uh, 14 staff. Right now, we have over 60 staff, and we have branch in um, Abuja, Lagos, and now in Togo. Now, we opened Togo during pandemic. Just like this conference right now, on a good day, I believe it should be a kind of within the four war uh, uh, break for this conference. But now we are leveraging our technology to ensure that we still go ahead with this conference. And that's how we're making so this particular platform now to make that happen. And that was exactly what we did to launch the physical mall in Lagos, uh, in Togo rather. We are not there, but we leveraged on our technology and the mall was launched and now they are doing their business smooth and fine. So it means that um, the organizers of this program, they make some little research to say, okay, what platform can we use to ensure that we can still do this conference? So the leverage on that, and now we can see the results. I think we started from uh, 27 or so, if I'm right, up to now, and they are keeping track and they are following up, leveraging on this particular platform they are using. So it means that as an individual, you can leverage on anything because the power of leverage is so so like the uh uh the image you are seeing right there are you hearing me hello yes sir we can hear you okay so, sorry for that yeah so the, the images you are seeing on the screen yes. shows uh the power of, of leverage. Now, if an individual just decides to take that piece off, it may be very stressful. So you can see the team of guys trying to achieve that particular thing. But the leverage here is not just their efforts, but the tiny, small objects below the plank. As tiny as that object is, that gives them the push to achieve what they wanted to achieve. So as tiny as uh, uh, the individual is, as tiny as that technology is, as tiny as that idea is, that is all you needed to move to the next level. So that the system you intend building, you build a system, then the system will now start generating money, contact, names. And before you know it, um, yeah, where well, let me put it that way. Next slide. I've already, I've already explained the next slide, which is um, uh, my, my journey so far. So it's, uh, I don't want to share a whole lot. I don't want to just take it because I have um, one or two other things to So I don't want to bore you like this with that. So the bottom line from this from this section is... All right. Uh... Okay, go ahead, Michelle. All right, guys. So uh, Mr. Adijoro would now be taking us on his leveraging journey he's going to be sharing with us his experiences in this field um right about now you guys can start asking questions on the live chat on our youtube channel you can start asking questions so mr Jero, over to you sir all right um my journey so far yeah um um as you can, I'm, I'm a young i'm a young person and um um, 2000 and, um, 2017, 
after I left the company I, I was working with, so I decided to, to start off my own. And it was a very, very tedious uh, decision as I then. But I, I called on, on two, three of my friends and we had a roundtable discussion and we shared the ideas and um, clarification of um, responsibilities. And we have a company which we registered that same year, but we couldn't launch because of the capital and all that. So first thing, make sure that your idea is solid. Make sure you study your idea very well. Make sure you know all about that field you are going into. Because the first set of people you are going to encounter for, for financial support or whatever support will be your family and friends. And if they cannot see clear picture about what you are talking about, you may find it difficult to raise funds. And if you can't raise funds from your family and friends, then trust me, you'll find it very, very difficult to raise funds from people who are not within your close circle. So all these were done, and we moved to the next stage. We were able to raise 12 million naira and we started the company. And within a short period of time, we achieved some milestones. Why? Because, don't let me say we make use of, but we leverage a whole lot on contact, leverage a whole lot on people, mouth to mouth advertisements. We don't do radio, t uh, radio TV and all that. That's why uh, middle class AMAT, I'm sure majority of you will not even know about it. We don't do radio, TV, we don't do, and we have over 22,000 registered members that shop on our platform, like on the daily basis. But we don't do radio or TV advert and all that. So it's a word of mouth. That is what we leverage on. So we leverage on word of mouth. And we leverage on the, on the statistics of the fact that there are a whole lot of people who are poor looking for uh, 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 living. So we created a platform where people can earn from the little thing that they do. So technology added to the normal way of life of Nigerians, then we have a system. So whatever you want to do, remember, this is Africa. And I was sharing with some I said, you need to stop importing or copying the American, the Western, the Asian life. The more we are doing that, the more we get it complicated for ourselves. Rather, let's study our own way of life. How do we do? How do we behave? What, what's our belief? Then let's see what kind of technology can we use to enhance this? Then you'll see that we'll have an edge way. And that's exactly what we did. Okay, the way of life, how do you how do Nigeria shop? Like for every average Nigerian, when you want to shop, you go to the market, no one you have to bargain. Like this thing is 20 naira. Ah, I'm gonna sell it for me 15 naira. That is, that is it, something that is, is part of us. So now bringing a technology to space whereby you just buy, you don't negotiate. Something that's like, hey, no, I would rather go to the market where I would go and negotiate that. Do you understand? So we try to, okay, let's see how we can use technology to enhance the normal way of African life. So when you are seeing it, what you are seeing is comfort. You are seeing convenience. But at the same time, you are still saving your money then they cannot make use of it. But anything you are doing and saving money and cost and all that, people, because of five naira, they can forget about comfort, they can forget about convenience, and they will still go to that particular place so that they can save that five naira. But if you can give them a platform whereby they will still save that five naira, the confidence and all that, and that is what technology can also do for us. And that is what we as a company, that is exactly what we did. And we're leveraging that, and we grew from 10 of 14 to over 22,000 registered members that we have. And our, our staff now is about 60, whatever or so. And everything now, I don't want it to be in those branches. We can monitor everything we do using a particular platform. So technology has made things more easier for us. The only thing is for we as Africans to accept it. Now, I was watching the video of um, Alibaba, um, a Korean um, logistic company. Now, they have a self-drive car that does delivery within China. 
So the stress of your bad guy is delaying and all that. Now they are trying to eradicate that. So a self-drive, every item is, is packaged inside, program and all that. The, the, uh, the car will come to your house, do the delivery, deliver your products to you, and move. So that is where technology is going to. And if you are seeing the stage of your customer will come to your shop to come and buy, or you have to look for one buy to, oh, brothers and sisters, things are changing. So for us to keep tab and create a very nice and robust world, we need to update ourselves with the latest and current development in the tech world that is related to the business that you do. Trust me, whatever business you do, even if we are, um, if you sell food, whatever business you do, there are something that is a technology somewhere. If the if you don't have, then you can invent one to ensure that your business runs smoothly and you enjoy the usage of technology. Thank you. God bless you. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Adeju. So we'll be taking questions now. If you have any questions for Mr. Adeju, please comment at our YouTube um, channel. To the live chat on YouTube, please write down your questions. Okay, so we have a question. So are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, we have a question. So this question goes, says, how can I make money online? And that's, that's, the, same okay. question I'm, that's the same question I'm saying too. <laughs> hey. Okay. How can you make money online? Yes. Uh, uh, that's the uh, Akin Jobi Sadiq. Yes, sir. He wants to know how he can. I guess he, he wants to know how he can apply um, technological means to make money, basically. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Akin Jobi, it depends on what to do at the moment. Now, there are diverse ways of you earning online. And there are also a whole lot of Ponzi and a whole lot of fake, um, fake businesses online. I was a victim of a whole lot of, you know, I lost a whole lot of money to some kind of um, online business stuff and all that. But the truth is, it depends on what you do currently. Do you want to make money online based on what you do? Or you just want to leverage on some online businesses to make money. So you have to decide. So if, for, if it's for you to leverage on some of the businesses online to make money, then you have to now sit and check which of these businesses is in line with your vision. Which of these businesses is in line with your own dream. So you can't just jump into anywhere because of the money. It has to be aligned with your own potential so that you're okay, fine. Oh, this, so that you can have full understanding of such business before you now start putting in your money or whatever you want to put. But if it is if that's something you are doing presently, then you can now see by asking your clients, your customers, how you can serve them more better. Then you see how you can now leverage on a particular technology to achieve that. So currently, I don't know which of it, but you have to now check. If you want to leverage on online businesses, check and see businesses that are in line with what you do, or businesses that are in line with your own belief and vision, study and research and ask a whole lot of questions about it. And I will ask, I will tell you, start small. Don't be enticed with the figure they say you are going to make. Start small, study it there before you know more for that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, we have another question. And the question goes like this. It says, I want to go online, but many are afraid of entertaining online businesses because of the various scams and Ponzi. How do I differentiate myself with value? All right, uh, Mr. Daniel, thank you for, uh, for, for the question. Now, you going online, what are you taking online? That is very key. What is that thing that you are taking online? This is just that because everybody is doing online, you want to go online. So before you go online, the business you do offline, what is the value to your customer? Then 
Now you going online, you look at, yes, I'm making, I'm adding more value to this. Now, when I talk about Ponzi scheme and all kind of scams and all that, majority of those things, there are, are, are businesses that, um, how would I put it? Businesses that you can't own. You can't own such businesses. Businesses that most of the time you can't even trace their address. And there are some you can't even trace their address. And you can't even see a building and all that. But there's still fraud inside. But for you as an individual, you going online, I think what is important is your own intention as an individual. And, and know that it's not going to be a kind of a sporadic thing. It's not going to be a kind of um, a one-time thing that you get online and all of a sudden, boom, no. It's going to take time. Just like, see, the offline and online is the same thing. Now, you're starting a business. Okay, let me create this scenario. Um, you, you, you get a shop somewhere. Oh, how to start a business? You rented a shop somewhere. You stock up your place. Now, you are new in that environment. But you have something great in your shop. But because you are new in that environment, people will try and observe and study. But it gradually. See the quality of your service, your customer relations, how you attend to them, your attitude, your feedbacks. They will check all those things before they can now start recommending people to come to your shop. Then gradually with time, First month, second month, third month, you start having traction of customers and all that and all that. The same thing online. So when you come online, as you're going online, you know you are new in the space. And there's some other people doing something similar to what you're doing. But because you are new, keep up with what you do, your value. Study other businesses in the physical or in the online. How do they do? What can that have? Keep adding it, keep doing it. Gradually, gradually, gradually. You will be the attraction, then you can start getting the benefit of you being online. So it's not just a one time thing and depends on what you are taking online. I think that's it, Mr. Daniel. Okay, thank you very much for that. Okay, we have another question from Mr. Akin Jobi Sodik. He wants to know what are the downsides to tech? I guess okay. that means. Okay. okay. All right, let me, let me give you, I have, I have one critical one that I have in my head. Um, 2018, um, my IT team, um, they were seeing how the company was making progress and the greedy nature in them took over them and they copied the whole system. And they duplicated it in another platform. They registered their own company and they launch as a competitor while they are still in the company working with us. Now, they copy our system, which is the tech, and they are then running it. They have got another year, they have the system, they did a whole lot of stuff, and we lost over 150 million naira to this stuff I just explained shortly. We lost over 150 million naira, which put us into a whole lot of debt with our suppliers and all that. That is one. So when we are saying we should leverage on tech, there are so many that are not disadvantages. Do you understand? So there are disadvantages. And disadvantage depends on the kind of people that surround your system. And it depends on the kind of security measures you put on. I would say because of the fact that um, um, I, I, uh, those guys, I think we've been together for like seven years. So I think I trusted them to some level. So I think that's what, what happened, happened. Do you understand? So now you have to know that in business, even if you know this guy for 20 years, <laughs> when it's business, know that, okay, I trust you, but we still have to put all these security measures on ground. Because never can tell what can happen later in the future. So when you are doing your research, you're going online, you also have to research what are the major security measures I need to put in check to ensure the safety of my business or whatever I do online? What are the kind of persons I need on board to bring into this closed cycle that can maintain and manage the system if we are not an IT person? So those are the things. And there are a whole lot of um, scams, a whole lot of stuff that will surround whatever you do. But you need to be well determined. So if you know your security measures are intact, 
your verification process from third, second, fourth verification process is also intact, then I think you'll be fine. Okay, thank you for answering that question, sir. Um, we have another question from Joshua Oni. Sir, you made mention of studying our societal way of life and leverage on technology. Yeah. If we bring a solution that works in the Western world to our society, won't it thrive? Oh. Now, right now there are a whole lot of Western Western ideas, Western playbook, business models currently in Africa. And they are moving. But remember, they are moving because they are raising funds somewhere, somewhere, somewhere to push. Majority of them, when, I, when we say um, they, are, they, are, they are making progress, they are charging and all that, I'm not referring to they are making profits. Because they are two different things. There are a whole lot of them, right? There are a lot of companies we see in the tech world right now that, yes, their names are very big, but they are not making profit yet. And that is just the truth. I mean, the community, so I know. That is just the truth. Why? Because it requires, like, I'll be launching a, a, a product very soon called um, um, Ojami. Now, this program has been designed that for two years, we are not going to make profits. Because that is the only way. Do you understand? We are not going to make profit. But people will be seeing the progress. But as a company, you know that you are not making profit. So I'm not saying that um, uh, you bringing something is bad. But what I'm saying is whatever you want to bring, what should be very important to you is the African mentality and way of life. There are some things that as Africans, we don't give us on some things. So you have to check. Okay, this particular thing. Now, it's not all what all the motivational speakers like um, when you listen to motivational speakers, those foreign guys and all that. Now, majority of them, they are telling you what they are telling you based on their own environment, based on their own atmosphere. But if you want to implement what they are saying here in Africa, you now discover that why is it difficult to do? It is difficult because the infrastructures and uh, facilities to do that are not available here. So it will be very difficult for you to achieve. But there, they can achieve it easily. When I was in China, I was seeing some small, small guys, small, small boys, and their dreams are like, oh my God. But we have guys in Nigeria that can do this, but how are we not even allow them to do? Because there will not be light. Three weeks, four weeks, no light. Now you'll be discovered like, okay, I'll do it during the day. During the day, noise everywhere and all that. So there are some things that we need to check and say, okay, can this thing work in Africa before you bring it? Or if you are bringing it, it's a lot for you to now remodel it to now suit your market because your market is the African, not where you are bringing it from. So that is the point I'm trying to explain here. Okay. So um, we're going to take this last question from Okwayemi Oyeyiko. Is digital marketing a way of technology leveraging? Yes. That's just the answer. Yes. Because digital marketing, um, the Facebook, the Instagram, and every other social media platform you're using to access people, maybe you sponsor ID, you do that, you are leveraging on it to gain more traffic, to gain more views, to whatever business and product you do. So the answer is yes. Okay. Thank you for answering the question, sir. Um, any other question? Okay, we have another question from Cody Ezini. She says, how do you prove to people that you are not a scam online? <laughs> One, <laughs> for you to prove to people that you are not a scam on, online. Africa, like I told you, you know, trust is, trust is a problem. So whatever business you are taking online, 
make sure there is a verified physical address, verified contact. And remember, it's not everybody that you see online that you see say yes to your product. But you do the needful. Make sure your values are very solid. Make sure your feedbacks, your comment section, like your comment sections and all that, make sure they are always on fire. Not that someone drops a message and in the next five, ten, whatever day before you reply. No. So when you are constantly online giving people feedback, asking questions, and referring people to physical places where they can see your store or whatsoever, where they can come, that will build credibility for you. But if it is um, your address, you can't even trace. They send you a message, you will not reply on time. All those things are passing a kind of a wrong signal to your potential customers. But first thing first, state your vision and vision, your mission and vision clearly. Let your value be known. Let the, the, uh, the business you do, let it be known. Where people can find you, let it be known. They'll be doing your marketing. Then with time, and ensure again, like um, our, our son was in the product and she sold some stuff and she was so happy and I said, no, that particular customer, let them make use of that thing. Let them send you a review. Let them send you a feedback for the quality of your service. So keep getting feedback from your customers and clients and make sure you post those feedback on that your social media or whatever online platform that you do. So let that be constant feedback from your customers. So it's not every time you are the one doing the whole talking. Yeah, we show that people are actually patronizing you. So let there be constant feedback from your customers as well. So all those things, those are the things that people check. So now, okay, let me give it a try at least. One or two persons. Before you know it, one or two persons, they can chat those people that are giving feedback and ask them about you if truly is there and they can say good things about what you do. Then, gradually, you bring your credibility. Then, when it comes to scam, you will not be part of people they will suggest as a scam. Okay, wonderful. Wow, Mr. Juru, we've learned a lot, a lot on how to leverage tech to build wealth. Um, we've learned, well, I personally have learned that any business I want to venture in, I should make sure I, I leverage on any technological means available for me to yield great um, profits from that business. So thank you very much, Mr. Dejo. We are very grateful for you. We're very grateful for you coming to speak with us today. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. And thanks for having me. Thank you, sir. Do you have any other things to say? Uh, all, all I would just say is uh, um, uh, Africa, Nigeria. There's nobody that's going to build this for us except ourselves. So we need, yes, I know the government are not helping matters, but the truth is we need to stop um, just divert our attention from the government. Let me put it that way. And focus on what you do. Stay fast on it, be consistent with it, be determined, and let's have a good attitude. Then we stay true. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Have a great day, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, guys. So um, I have someone here with me, and his name is John Wright. He's from. He's the head of design for um, the Professor Ayodele Awojobi Design Competition, and he has a message for us today. So, hello, John. Are you here with us? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. Huh? Yeah. I'm not on the radio. Hi, how yeah, you are. How are you doing today? Okay. I'm very well. Uh, how are you guys doing? How are you doing? Uh, we're great. We're great. All right. So on to your message for us. Okay. All right. So hi, everyone. My name is John Wright. Uh, I'm the head of design for PADC. 
right? And PADC, uh, let me tell you what PADC is about. I'm about to share my screen. Uh, um, can you guys see my screen? Okay, yeah. So, yeah. PADC is an annual STEM based design competition targeted at undergrads in Nigerian ter territory institutions as a as a national wow I don't know what this is. Anyways, PADC is an event for um, for people that are interested in bringing the ideas and the solutions to solve Nigerian problems, right? So we have been on for like four years now. And this year, uh, this year has been very bad because of this COVID-19. But we are trying to make this year very useful. So we decided to bring up a challenge wrapped around the COVID-19 um, pandemic. So this challenge is meant to um, keep everyone busy, right? Like everyone is panicking, everyone is on lockdown, everyone, no one knows what to do and, want, and anything to spend their time on. So this challenge is to like um, uh, bring out some innovative minds. Uh, so the COVID-19 challenge is about um, developing um, applications, ad ideas, hardware, software, targeted at um, solving COVID problems. So it can be um, searching for um the amount of people in your area that has covid and then um, separating them from the people that don't have covid so that kind of data can be used to solve like many more problems in the long run so this challenge is for um youths ranging from the age of um, 18 to 30. Uh, the challenge is starting from Monday, so everyone can apply on our website, www.padc.com, and also you guys can check out our social media platform, um, PADC underscore official, every platform, Facebook, Twitter, every single thing. So um, the details for the competition or the challenge is posted on our website and on our and on our Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I this meeting was yeah. So this. I didn't have much time to like um, prepare for this talk. So uh, this, anyways, uh, yeah, I think that's all from me. Uh, I, I guess that's all from me. Okay, thank you, John. Thank you for, thank you. All right, guys, so that is the end of the first session. I hope you were able to gain a lot of knowledge on how to leverage tech to build wealth, how to apply tech in any um, in any business that you venture into. All right, so don't forget to um, like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Follow us on all our social media platforms. And um, when you, we'd love for you to tweet about your experience on the next conference. We'd love for you to tweet about your experience on the next conference. Um, we'd love for you to tag us at ECX Unilag using the hashtag the next conference. Mm -hmm. uh
All right, so that this is the end of the first, and we'll be back at 3.30 for the second session where we'll be talking about the topic titled, The Art of Negotiation and Negotiation Skills. Thank you very much.